I am constantly amazed that in every corner of the world there are fellow Jews. It has been said that if there are 12 million Jews, there are 13 million Judaisms. And from the earliest age, I knew that to be true. There were Sephardic Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, Reform, Conservative, Orthodox, Modern Orthodox, Reconstructionist, Renewal, Egalitarian Observant Conservative Jews, Eco-Jews, Satmar, Lubavitch, and so many more. There were Jews like my grandparents, who had lost a total of 18 brothers and sisters, along with their parents, in the camps. There were my parents, who never set a foot in shul, yet my mother sent her three girls to Yiddish school. And growing up, I always assumed that all these Judaisms managed to somehow successfully coexist, or at least appear to. <laughs> And then one day, I heard about a group of Ugandans called the Abiyudaya, and all what I had previously thought about who is a Jew and what makes a Jew was called into question. The whole question of who is a Jew is a very is a very delicate one. Over the years, it's been a very critical issue for us. That critical issue became apparent to me in the fall of 2001, when the spiritual leader of the Abiyudaya, Gershom Sezumu, came to study for six months in New York as a guest of Hebrew Union College. I want to say that uh, you have been so nice to me, and uh, I thank you for that. We have and I, having you here. I want to say goodbye to you. It's so hard to say goodbye, but uh, goodbye, and uh, I hope one time I will be back here, and then we shall sing more. How Gershom became known outside of Uganda had been either accidental or divinely inspired. I couldn't decide. Based on my mother's urgings, when I was in Kenya, I had to go to synagogue for the high holidays, so I went for Yom Kippur. And uh, I was shocked, because when I was there, everywhere on the street, all I'd see was blacks, was Africans. You go into the synagogue, and it was all white. It was all expa expatriate Jews, uh, Europeans, Israelis, Americans except for one guy. There was one young-looking African man there. And so, uh, being the crazy little 20-year-old that I was, I sat down next to him. And after curiously sitting next to him for a while, I finally just kind of whispered, you know, you know, what are you doing here? So he started telling me about his community in Uganda that he said had mud hut synagogues and uh, had been practicing Judaism for generations. So I was enthralled, and we ended up a month later going to see the community. They greeted us with song, with beautiful, amazing songs. The, the blend of Ugandan music and Hebrew is just phenomenal. And we could not believe their synagogues, just very simple. A lot of Judaic symbols. They used Bibles that they got in Uganda and just would rip out the New Testament. So they just have the Old Testament. I was captivated by this story of the Abiyudaya and the way the community had begun through the vision of its founder. Semei kakungulu as a soldier. 
and he was helping the British to establish imperialism in Uganda. That is when the British also requested him to preach Christianity on their behalf. Our father was among the first Christian converts. And therefore he played a very important role in establishing Christianity in Uganda, particularly in Busoga and here. He built many churches for the Christians. When he retired in 1913, he settled down here. Then he took the Bible seriously. And they used to go on a veranda from morning to evening trying to read the Bible. So they discovered that the Christians had made a mistake of following three gods. Basically, our father discovered for the first time independently through reading the Bible that ah, the true God of Israel is unchangeable. Is there, was there, he is here and he will continue being so. And he read particularly the story of Abraham with a lot of interest and wanted to act exactly like Abraham our father did. So he circumcised himself and his children and Paul, uh, later promised to circumcise his future children at the age of 80 days. He taught the same to members of our community who accepted and by 1919 over 3,000 people had accepted to be circumcised, and they were circumcised. Baruch atah Adonai, Goal Israel. The Abaydajush community did not have access to rabbinic Judaism at that point. So most of what they observed was taken directly from the Bible. In 1971, there was an event that later became a catastrophe to the community, and that was the coming to power of President Yidi Amini Dada. The synagogues were all taken, our lands confiscated, some of our synagogue buildings were turned into public buildings. We were not allowed to study Judaism or practice Judaism in public. And I remember my father praying, Oh God, help us to get rid of Idi Amin Dada. That would be the conclusion of every silent prayer we had in the bedroom. And then I realized God's answer to my father's prayer in 1979, around the Pesaha time. Because Amin was overthrown on the 11th of April, 1979. And the new government declared freedom of worship. In one of his sermons, he said, God has sent salvation to us, just as he had done to the Israelites in Egypt. After Yidi Amin Dada, people were not sure of the future of the Abayudaya community. So some people left. And then a youth movement was started, and the leader was J.J. Kek, my brother. The youth were encouraged to come and study and make bricks to construct our synagogues that had fallen during Yid Amin Dada. And the community actually began to revive. Shema Israel, Adonai Adonai Good. In order to be accepted by the world Jewish community, the Abba Yudaya asked to be formally converted. Five conservative rabbis had agreed to perform the ritual, and I could not resist going along and seeing this tribe firsthand. The focal point of the tribe is Nabagoya Hill, in a mountainous region outside of Uganda's third largest city, Mbale, and a five-hour drive from Kampala, the capital.
It is hard to believe the devastating poverty. Outside of the city, there is little electricity or running water. The daily grind of life without water is mind-numbing. Women walk miles to polluted river water or pumps, only to wait in line for hours and then carry the dirty, filled containers home. Yet, for all the hardship and primitive conditions for worship, the connection of the Abiyudaya to their Jewish faith is strong. This is a Palisa synagogue, and one of the oldest synagogues here we have in Uganda. You're the Hazan here? I am the Hazan here. So now, there's no Torah here? There's no Torah here. We don't have the Torah. With us, here we use the humash. Uh -huh. yeah? Yeah. We, we have to cover, I think you've seen this. Right. We get a cloth, we cover here, we put the humash to represent the Torah. Right. So when the wind comes to the, that part to remove the Torah, we have to remove the humash. And so we put here, everybody goes on kissing. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have the, so we have to use the right. the only right. strange right. book here. Right. Yeah. Now how many people do you usually get on perhaps Shabbat? At least we get the minyan. We, at least at you have least. the minyan. So it seats about 25, 30. This seat can accommodate three people, four people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes four here. Right. If I can accommodate three, here it right. is 12 people, right. which are men. This law, oh, this this law is, is for women. women. Yeah. And this is for the person who reading the Torah when he wants to rest, you know. It's very hard to be Jewish here. This is very difficult. Why did you want to convert? With me, um, I, have, I, th I think I have one, more than one reason. Because first, the, the obvious one is because I was born Jewish, my father was Jewish, his father was Jewish, you know. He, his, my grandfather was, he got converted to Judaism when Kakunguru came. He was one of the, the people moving with Kakunguru. So it's one of the reasons. And second, I think I'm, I interact with very many people of different religions. So when I interact with them and compare with my religion, Judaism, and I read in the Bible, like in um, Zechariah 8.21, it says, even if you're not an Israeli, but you can observe the Shabbat, observe all the rituals concerning Judaism, God will never forget you. He will make sure when he's collecting all the Jews from all over the four corners of the earth, probably you will be one of the people to go. So that thing makes me very strong, and I say, possibly one time, I'll have to hope to be, to join those people who observe the, the real things. So I think that thing makes me very strong and uh, regardless of the situations around me, I say, I will not give up. God is for me. The logistics of conducting a formal conversion of over 400 people are not simple. And the rabbis gathered early in the morning to try to figure out how to efficiently carry out the process and the questions they would pose to the Abiyudaya. Putting aside customs and observance, that they have an idea of Jewish history, a certain idea of, of uh, what the basic Jewish texts are. When the rabbis finally arrived at Nabagoya Hill, the whole village turned out. Particularly sweet was the Abiyudaya's reaction to the heads of the non-profit group Kulanu, an organization that was responsible for ongoing support of the community as well as the underwriting of the rabbi's trip. Two of the leaders, Gershom and JJ, were converted in Rockville, Maryland in August of 2001. I was a little bit skeptical. Because sometimes people promote things and they're not quite what they seem to be. But after I met Gershom and JJ, these guys are for real. They know so much. They're so committed. They're practicing Judaism in the middle of nowhere, Jewishly. We took them to Mikvah. They had their Hatafat Ambrit. We took them to the Mikvah. The Beit team was so moved by their story. 
But of course, JJ and Gershom were not content with this. They wanted the rest of the community to have the opportunity to convert as well. And so they invited the rabbi who converted them, Rabbi Howard Gorin, to bring a bait in. And he selected these rabbis, and here we are in this miracle. We recognize that the entire community has been looking forward to this day for a long time and wants the official recognition of what is a fact, that the religion of this community is Judaism and the identification of this community is, is Jewish. The first two steps of the conversion process, a meeting with a bet din, or court, and a symbolic circumcision would take place in and around the synagogue. However, the third and final step, immersion, was especially difficult to organize as both the mikvah and running water are quite a distance away. things for sure with the walk into here it's gonna it, this is not a place we're gonna do it real speedily no yeah mm -hmm. the water is okay because the people even use this water yeah. for their home use it is used people come and really? draw water yeah, yeah. yeah. because we have, it's the only source of water in the area okay, okay should we look at the river yes okay. let's go so the problem here is enclosure? Well, also how quickly, if there's a lot of people, it'll be very difficult to uh, maybe here to, to bring everybody in and to people get dressed and get out. And yeah. Certainly the mikveh here can be used, but let's take a look at the options of the river. Okay. Remove while they're in the water and you, we can't see, they can take it off and hand it to a person next to them, go underneath, and then put the bathing suit back on and come out. Is that okay? Or a towel or, or a sheet. Or, that's okay. As long as every part of the body gets wet. Right. We have another spot. Sebaga so, says the other spot may be much. Concealed than this one. Much what? More concealed. Well, okay, we'll take a look. Nobody wants to come this far. Nobody will come. No. And we shall not come through where people are. Yes. We shall come through here. Mm. There's another route here. Is ah. it shorter? Yeah, it is shorter. <laughs> it can't be longer. <laughs> it's absolutely per this is perfect. It's isolated. It's, it's perfect. So we have some options now. But this place, there's no, there's no viewing gallery on the other side. That's what I like about it. It's private. For many years, Pinchas Musenzi, a farmer, had been looking forward to a formal conversion. This is your house, right in back of you. And why did you decorate it with Jewish stars and menorahs? Uh, 
the way you put stars on your house like that, it's a, just a sign to show your fellow Jews that there is a Jewish person here. So there is no Jewish person who can pass without recognizing that this home is Jewish. His wife, Devora, who knits head coverings to help support the family, recited for me her version of the Friday night candle lighting blessing. As there were so many people, the decision was made to have more than one bet din conduct the questioning simultaneously. We decided to conduct the bet din in family groups. Families would come to us together. Some of you do not yet have a Hebrew name. So what we would like to do is speak to those who do not have a Hebrew name and suggest a name. And if it's a name that you like, or it's a name that you, there's a name you want to choose, that will be your Hebrew name. What's her name? Susan. Susan. Okay, does she have a Hebrew name? Shoshana would probably. Shoshana. You're all here participating in the process today of your own free will. Nobody has forced you to be here. You're here by choice. Good. Tell us about the uh, the role of Israel, of the, the land. We asked uh, the families a series of of basic questions about their uh, personal commitment to Judaism, their background with the Abayudaya community, their understanding of our religion, their beliefs. I want to know of if you accept the God of the people of Israel as the one true God for all of the world. Yes, you do. It was important for us in our language and our rhetoric not to view what was happening as a conversion in the normal sense of the word. You can say that you accept the obligation to perform the mitzvot to the best of your ability. Yes. Because this community has thought itself uh, to be Jewish, considers itself Jewish, and has been behaving uh, as a traditional Jewish community, as a committed, observant Jewish community for generations. It is now coming to four years when I began to be a Hazan in this synagogue, Namanyin synagogue. So you do a Pasha every week? Yes, I, I do the Pasha. And we, we use the Humash as, the, as our Torah, in the, the Ark. Because so. you use the Humash as a Torah because? Because we don't have the Torah. You don't have the Torah. We have not yet got a Torah. When was the synagogue actually built? I can't tell, but it, was, it is too old. It has taken as if 75 years. Uh, you see, it has a lot of iron sheets, and even it has some cracks, and what, even the doors are just fake. We have seats, we have seats here, where people come and sit, uh, and these are some of the seats. So, we were really here to welcome the community into the Jewish people through the mechanisms usually reserved for conversion, but it was a, a unique situation. What have you been taught about uh, Adonai? Uh, the only thing I know about God is He's only one. There is no other God, as it is written in the, in the Exodus, that Shema Israel, Adonai, 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 Echad. Yeah. And when they become 13 years old, you will, God willing, see to it that they observe their bar mitzvah with the community? I was absolutely overwhelmed watching the excitement and joy the Abiyudaya felt after completing this first step. Yeah. yeah, It says in the Torah that a thousand years are as a single moment in God's eyes. 
and after thousands of years, Judaism is spontaneously coming alive. Rabbi Moshe Kotel was also touched. This particular community, the Abiyadaya Jews of Uganda, have been so cut off from the rest of world Jewry. I mean, their story is a story of hope and triumph. And I think anybody can take inspiration from their determination to realize their spiritual connection to the rest of their community throughout the world. Shalom. 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 We're living in miraculous times. Am Yisrael Chai. The people of Israel are alive and well all over the world, including the rural countryside of Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> After the Beit Din was completed and they were duly welcomed and congratulated, a series of rituals was required to follow. For men there was Hatafat Nam. Uh, since all the men and all the boys had been circumcised in accordance with their religious practice, all that remained was a symbolic gesture of circumcision, which is drawing a drop of blood from the site of the circumcision. This is just alcohol. No, no. Uh, Rabbi Andy Sachs served double duty as he is licensed to perform circumcisions. There's nothing that we haven't been able to overcome. What I do hope we overcome is not a logistic problem, but the recognition on the part of the world that these people are Jewish, that they are entitled to all of the rights and privileges of Jews, and that ultimately that will mean that they are entitled to move to Israel if they should choose to exercise their right under the right of return. As the young men were attended to, the adults patiently waited their turn outside. Immersion in a mikvah, or running stream water, is the final step of the conversion ritual. Women boarded a truck and van, which made repeated trips to the sugarcane fields. From there, they walked to the river. We really won't know how we're going to do this until we do it. It depends how many women are willing to go into the river at the same time. I can conceivably see that, you know, all the women on the truck right now will go into the river at the same time and they will immerse individually, one at a time so we can hear each individual blessing. Once they got near, they made certain that nothing would come between them and the water. The experience of going down with them for the immersion, I would have to say, in many ways, confirms what we saw sitting at the Beit Din. It, it's hard sometimes to read people when they're sitting before you. Do you promise to raise your children exclusively in the Jewish religion? <laughs> and you ask five or six questions, and it, it's hard for them to communicate. I mean, I suspect that any of us would have the same difficulty if we were asked those questions and have to express ourselves in terms of our belief and our commitment. But to think that these people were so excited about the immersion. I mean, they were just so full of joy that it was not surprising that going and coming, they would be singing. In the bus, they were singing. We're packed in like sardines with people on the roof, and they're singing. It was an amazing experience. <coughs> Down a steep hill they went. were the little glitches like trying to find a place for people to get undressed. 
realizing that we had to organize them by age group so that children wouldn't see their parents immersing. First mothers with the smaller children. All good. Everyone has to be completely immersed. Heads, hand, hair. Okay? That's what you're looking for. Okay, okay. Is the water shallow? So we yeah, can the water is shallow. shallow. So we can extend. We can extend this other side. Then young women and then adults. My reaction to the dedication of the Abiyudaya was mirrored by the rabbis. They were so impressed with the Abiyudaya's commitment that they stood by the river for hours in 95 degree heat to hear the prayers and bear witness as female helpers visually confirmed the immersion. <laughs> In general, what we found was that not only were they eager to do it, but that many of them had already memorized the blessings, had listened carefully, not only to the instructions that were given that day, but clearly had been prepared beforehand and knew exactly what to do, you know, went right into the water, dunked themselves down, popped up, said the blessing, dunked themselves down again, popped up, said the other blessing, dunked themselves down again, and they were gleeful. We're going to be doing this straight through until we have no more time and we have to leave the, I mean, the village. They're going to have to continue on their own afterwards. Okay. Not but that's a really good thing because they will then, within their community, not be dependent on the outsiders, but themselves establish a vacant of observant people and witnesses who will be responsible for those who haven't managed to complete the conversion while we were here. The following day, it was the men's turn. When now Judaism is now being open to us, we are not Jews by birth, we are Jews by conviction and we shall remain so. And therefore, we are so grateful in the name of the great Lord of Israel that you have come to see us in this remote part of the world, far away, not remembered, <laughs> but the truth of which our Father foresaw 70 years ago is now come to fruition. Old and young immerse themselves. Go down. All the way, all the way. Fine. Okay. One of you. Baruch Atah Adonai. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Asher. Asher. Kitshanu. Kitshanu. Bemitzvotav. Vitzivanu. Vitzivanu. Al. Al. Hatvila. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Amen. Amen. <laughs> After many of the Abiyudai had completed the steps involved in their conversion, there was a break in the activity for celebration. Rabbi Gorin had brought a Torah donated by his congregation to the community. In this community, as in all communities, there are those who are, let's say, more spiritually gifted and those who more readily find the beauty in religious observance and literature than others. But what is perhaps not unique, but very special about this community is that Judaism here 
has instilled every area of human experience as it is intended to do. Uh, so that even those who perhaps not be personally motivated uh, in a different context to lead a, a life of Jewish piety and, and spirituality here are part of this magnificent religious enterprise and are drawn in by the power of the religious life that the Avayudaya have evolved. community. All my parents were Jewish and are still Jews. We've been celebrating Jewish high holidays like Yom Kippur, uh, Scott, Shvot. All the way back we've been practicing Judaism. Clearly, the desire of this community to learn as much as they can about how Judaism is supposed to pra be practiced is what has sustained this community over the course of all of their, you know, I guess it's almost a century. And it's astonishing to come into the middle of nowhere and find this little isolated community where people can get up and read a Haftorah or do a part of the service, as well as anybody in any part of the world who's gotten the best Jewish education. You know, it's just too amazing for words. The joyous feeling continued through the Sabbath and Havdalah. Sabbath's concluding service. As a reflection of the commitment to live a Jewish life, a number of couples in the village, including Gershom and Sipora, remarry, clothed in wedding attire that was a gift from Jewish visitors to Nabagoya Hill. The first thing that we do is we sign the ketubah, and that you show that you agree to what's in this contract. We have you tug on a handkerchief, and that shows that you are in agreement to work on Sipora's behalf and honor her, to sustain and support her 
as is the custom among Jewish men. And Sipora, the bride has responsibilities too, and specifically you'll be pledging to participate with Gershom in maintaining a Jewish home in love, harmony, peace, and companionship, as is the custom among Jewish women. The wedding of Gershom and Sipora reaffirms the fact that the Abayudaya are now operating as part of a worldwide normative Judaism. And you have the ring that you're going to give to Sipora. Yes. And that we are celebrating with them what we celebrate around the world, and that is the centrality of the Jewish family in Jewish life. By this ring, by this ring, you are consecrated to me, you are consecrated to me, as my wife, as my wife, in accordance, in accordance, with the laws of Moses, with the laws of Moses, and the people of Israel, and the people of Israel. Okay, put on your finger now. Let us pray, that however many pieces this glass will break into, so may Gershom and Sipor's happiness be multiplied. achieving a great deal. Uh, it seems to me we're modeling uh, what's important about Jewish life and we are assisting members of the community in, in, in taking the necessary steps from here. And also, I think give us and the community an opportunity just to celebrate uh, because we're also excited and thrilled and satisfied with what has gone on this week that a wedding provides the perfect framework just to let loose and express our gratitude to each other, express our gratitude to God that this has come about, and be happy together. With Abba Yudaya melodies ringing in my ears, I returned to the United States to find that the acceptance of the Abba Yudaya was not as clear-cut as I would have imagined. So a year later, when Gershom and his brother JJ came to the United States to gain more public support, I gathered a group of rabbis from the three main Jewish denominations to reflect on the issues of who is a Jew where we will end up with our distinctions from the Orthodox versus the Reform, certainly, and at times versus the, uh, the Conservative, will be dependent upon one particular feature in the conversion process, and that's the Kabbalat ol mitzvot. In addition to the rituals that are performed, there has been a historical requirement that there be an acceptance not only of identification with the people, although that's the, the primary and first step, the Talmud says that it is, there has to be a willingness to accept the law, the ritual, and the laws of the people. And therefore, from the Orthodox perspective, a conversion is only complete when not only has the ritual been completed, but there is a full acceptance of observance. Rabbi David Ellenson, president of Hebrew Union College, disagreed. The classical definition of conversion from an orthodox perspective is that an individual who was obligated formerly to observe seven universal commandments known as the Noahide Covenant that the Jewish religious tradition understands 
that God imposed upon all human beings is now required to observe as a Jew 613 commandments. Consequently, anyone who will not make this type of pledge cannot be considered to be legitimately Jewish from an Orthodox perspective. At least this is the way in which most Orthodox rabbis understand the definition of Jewishness. I would assert that such a definition is simply too narrow in a world where Jewishness is expressed in a multiplicity of ways. The question is, whenever an Orthodox rabbi will look at a conversion and say, is this an acceptable conversion, what has been the character of the acceptance of mitzvot? If the character of the acceptance of mitzvot is whole, is complete, then we will accept that. As long as the rabbis who were witnesses <clears throat> and were part of the Beit Din are acceptable to you. That's correct. That's correct. This, Chancellor uh, Emeritus is Mar Shorsh of the Jewish the Theological Seminary. The Jew what will historians say of us 250 years from now, two generations after the Holocaust, and we make it impossibly difficult for people to become Jewish? The sad fact is that conversion in Judaism has become a power struggle between the Orthodox and the non-Orthodox to the great detriment of the Jewish people. Can you say with a complete certainty that you accept Adonai as the one and only God? So which convert is Jewish? My response to you is that those converts who have been brought into Judaism according to halachic requirements, those halachic standards are quite flexible. The Orthodox would have us believe that they are uh, uh, inflexible, extraordinarily rigid. Uh, that is a misreading of all the halachic uh, documentation that I have consulted. What's helpful here, especially in the case of your community, is what I alluded to before, the historic connection as opposed to uh, the legal connection, because I'm guessing that there are vast numbers of our forebears who attached themselves to the Jewish people and the Jewish faith in times past without the benefit of full halachic conversion process. And over the course of time, they probably just got amalgamated into the Jewish people, um, which after the fact we can but accept, even if in theory we would not have recognized it at, at the time. One of my great difficulties with the um, people who are objecting to the Abedaya's inclusion into our people is that we know their date. We know when they came into the Jewish people in 1919. I don't know the date my great-grandparents or my great-great-grandparents began. Um, we have a family tree that goes back probably five, six generations. But what happened before that? I don't know. Um, nobody's questioning me. Nobody's questioning our commitment because at least in modern times we have the right evidence. Well, they've had the right evidence too. The Abiyudaya's long observance of Jewish tradition was obvious. This is my grandmother who died in 1999. She was born in 1905. And she was Abiyudaya, She was Abiyudaya, totally. And that is our culture here. When we bury you, at least we have to put signs to show that you are totally Jewish here. Right. Yeah. This is one is my grandfather, and it's written in Uganda. He's called Zakaria Balozi. Oh, I see. So this yeah. is the family graveyard. And, yeah, most of the Abidaya do like this. And is this near your home? Yes, just right behind there. So there is no communal cemetery. Everyone has basically their e own family cemetery near their home. Exactly. Are they all like this? I mean, do they? Yeah, all... every family. They have a place. Right. They deserve a piece of land for burying their right. relatives there. Right. All of this place is uh, specified for that job. And this one is my father. Oh. He is called Enosh Waman, like my name. What about these over there? All those ones, but. Uh, they were but, older, but, much older. Much older. They say when Amin was uh, there. They, they were not allowed to bury. They were buried, but in a secret way. Oh, and so there was no time to put uh, oh, the signs. I see. Yeah. Of course, when you are burying somebody, you have to group yourself, come up in a crowd of people, and say we are burying is from our region. Right, right. And which was forbidden now to them. So they could only bury them in a very non-religious yeah, non way. Yeah, you could just smuggle that body into the grave. And oh, that's terrible. Or else 
they could get the, the authorities could get a Muslim or a Christian to bury your person. Those graves are much older compared to these ones. What? These are graves? Yes, those are graves where you see stones. And there's no marking of who the marking is, is here. Well, let me see. The marking is just, just this, to, but put, to put there the stones. Oh, I see, but there's no indication yeah, of who one, it is. Yeah, people were very poor, they couldn't cement their graves, so this is a sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some, like that one, I understand, she was buried during Amin's regime. Mm. So what they had is to bury, put their stones and uh, Quickly. Quickly and take off. Rabbi Joseph Potasnik, executive vice president of the New York Board of Rabbis and host of the long-running radio show, Religion on the Line, and who had helped publicize and support the Abiyudaya, was openly dismayed at the reluctance of many of his Orthodox listeners to accept the Abiyudaya as Jews. Is there something not troubling when people who've lived as Jews, practiced as Jews, since 1919, who have risked their lives to be Jews, shouldn't be recognized as Jews? Doesn't uh, something well, bother you with that? No, it doesn't bother doesn't me. Bother? Because, uh, it bothers me that they don't accept the halakha from Sinai. This law was made on Sinai. The conservatives say you don't have to believe in the revelation of the Torah. That already is a uh, very big, as we say in Hebrew, pagam in the... Uh, so don't recognize them as Orthodox Jews. Recognize them as conservative uh, Jews. That is not Jewish. I'm sorry to sound that reminded. Well, I'm glad you said it. So you're ready to write off, I guess, probably about 80% of the Jewish community. If, They're if not Jewish. If that's the case, I'm sorry to say yes. Abraham, we're getting nowhere with this. I'm ready to grant him not only full acceptance, I would give him every honor in the world because of all that he's done to live as a Jew and to promote Judaism in a country where it was prohibited. It seems to me that if people are ready to make the greatest possible sacrifice to be Jews, then we, Jews by birth, should respect that desire. I keep on asking the question, really, who is a Jew? Because instead of welcoming this tribe that has gone through a conversion by conservative rabbis, they are not being welcomed. There's difficulty getting two young men who want to study Hebrew at a kibbutz in Israel. There's been great difficulty getting them into Israel. And there really has not been any kind of groundswell of support. Yeah, I think the, uh, the operative word in your statement was conservative and the fact that they, the conversion was uh, under the auspices of conservative leadership. Then there were those who are not in the conservative movement who feel uh, we are not going to give full faith and credit uh, to those who are conservative as opposed to being orthodox. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't create more impediments uh, for those who have gone beyond what we would consider humanly necessary or religiously necessary to become Jews. Well, you know, there's a kind of circular reasoning which is really problematic. Many people said they're n they can't be real Jews because they don't have the infrastructure of Judaism, meaning that they don't have the Jewish schools and they don't have uh, the Jewish butchers, but the reality is they don't have the infrastructure simply because they don't have the support. If they had the support, they would have all of those things. They are eager to uh, study Jewishly. They are eager to do all of these things and more. I see people who have the infrastructure but don't have the commitment. Give me the commitment and, and the rest will follow, you know. Uh, what's primary here? The, the, it has to come from within. If it comes from within, we'll develop the without. But first, give me that, give me that heart that really is connected to Jewish life. <laughs> It has been our dream to be part of the larger Jewish family, to be among a bigger group that observes the same customs and traditions. Gershom and JJ went on to tour schools and congregations in the United States, yearning to belong to the larger Jewish community and to gain acceptance for the Abiyadaya. We are traveling around the United States because for long we have been living in isolation. Jewish people over the world did not know that there was a Jewish community in Uganda. 
And if Amin had actually decided to get rid of us, none of the Jewish people all over the world would have known. So we are moving around. Their efforts were not ignored. And through sponsorship by many Jewish congregations, electric lines and internet service have come to the Abu Yudaya, as well as their surrounding Christian and Muslim neighbors. Water tanks provide drinkable water, and a small medical facility has opened. But improvements are slow and limited, support not coming from all quarters. All the while, the Abu Yudaya's Jewish faith continues strong. I cannot help reflect on the Abu Yudaya's struggle for acceptance. It is ultimately disappointing to me that for many, an inflexible definition of who is a Jew prevails. There is little weight given to nishma, spirit. Rabbi Yudah Magnus wrote, the Jewish spirit, the Jewish soul, is the most important thing we have. In some sense, it is all we have, all that is worth having and living and struggling for. And it is clear to me that it is this spirit that I share with the Abu Yudaya, and it is this that makes us Jews. Nam ti magwa gona, de me me o yona, de me gambo vino, bien kura gira leno.